Howdy y'all, it's Lana from Bullet. Happy Tales of the Cocktail 2021. We're coming at you with the Bullet Frontier of Sustainability in your glass and behind the stick. I'm at Bullet Distilling Company in Shelbyville, Kentucky. We've got a lot of great guests for you today. And first off, we're gonna be joined by my buddy, Adam Geisler. So join us at the bar, come on. Hey Adam. Hey Lana, how are you today? I'm great, how are you? I'm doing wonderful, doing Thanks wonderful. Thanks for being here. It's great to be here with Adam Geisler, our bullet ambassador for the Northeast. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the liquid. Let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about bourbon. Absolutely, so bullet was founded in the mid 80s. Um, we all know spirits in the mid 80s. Um, we don't have near as many as we, uh, we have availability of now. And things that were very popular were more clear spirits, right? So we saw a lot of vodka, a lot of tequila drinks, and everything was really heavier and sweeter. Um, you know, we didn't have this really nice spicy rye bourbon uh, readily available that we do now. People seem to have a different uh, palate back then and really preferred sweeter drinks and kind of uh, artificially flavored. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, everything kind of gravitated towards that sweet side. Even bourbons, the, the bourbons that really were out in the market were heavily weeded. So even that kind of lended towards the sweet qualities of palates at the time. Yeah. Um, so to come out and do a rye heavy bourbon, something with a little more spice, a little more body to it, that's really going to uh, create a really unique flavor. So Absolutely. That's, that's where we started. And we started with this flagship bourbon right here, the orange label bottle that everyone is so familiar with. Um, and in this bottle, we have two thirds corn, one third rye, a little bit of malted barley. Um, but that, that rye content and that rye character of this bourbon is going to make a very nice, spicy, bold bourbon that's incredible for mixing or sipping neat or on the rocks. Absolutely. Well, it's really balanced. It's a 90 proof bourbon and it's been aged about six to eight years. So that's a significant time in the barrel. Absolutely. You know, you only have to be in the barrel for four years. Uh, to Correct. not put it on your label as a bourbon. So going a little extra couple years is gonna guarantee you get a little more of the flavor coming out of that barrel. You're gonna get a little more of those sweet candy notes and that Absolutely. vanilla coming out of there, right? Absolutely. So. Well, really yummy too. And it is so balanced with, with the high rye content that it'll really stand up to anything you throw right. at it. So if you're mixing with any assertive or aggressive flavors, sugar, bitters, lemon, ginger, any of that, you're gonna be all set to go with Bullet Bourbon. Absolutely. It was a great place to start. We're so happy that that got us our kind of foundation here. And, you know, several years later, we jump ahead. And in 2011, we launched this amazing rye whiskey. Number one selling rye in the world. Um, our rye has zero corn in it. Rye whiskeys have to be at least 51% rye. So a lot of rye whiskeys on the market do have a corn content in there, but ours does not. And because of that, we have this amazing dry finish to this rye whiskey. So as we all know, in the mid 2000s, when this whole craft cocktail boom was coming back, um, we had a lot of bartenders that were looking for recipes that had a high rye or yeah. as, as close to straight rye as you can get without chemical intervention here. Well, they wanted to honor the old classic cocktails that were making a comeback. So we needed something that was going to be really spicy. Absolutely. And play to that. Absolutely. And there wasn't really anything on the market. There wasn't. And we go uh, age wise, we're four to six years here. So it's a little younger than the bourbon, but rye's actually pick up a lot of characteristics and flavor in a shorter amount of time than bourbons do, mainly because of the spiciness of the grain. Um, so we go four to six years here. And like you said, I love mixing cocktails with this. I think any whiskey forward drink, Manhattans, Old Fashions, Boulevardiers, things like that. I really, really like using the rye whiskey for. Do you have any favorite drinks you like mixing up with the rye whiskey? You know, it's funny. It's funny you should ask. Um, rye whiskey, we love all those spirit forward stirred cocktails and all of the bartenders inside. We love that spice. But what I kind of gravitate to is drinking it during hot weather. I like a summertime rye drink. I, I live in Texas, so I mix bullet rye. With Gets warm down in Austin. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> Kentucky's pretty hot too, though. Um, I really like to mix bullet rye with sweet tea. And if mm. I want to kind of like, you know, give it a little pizzazz, I might put some raspberries muddled in there. I might put a little bit of aloe liqueur or fruit liqueur, maybe an herbal liqueur, pick up the herbal notes in it. I think my favorite thing about bullet rye is when I nose it and when I sniff it, I get creamy biscuit dough and herbs. Ooh, wow. I really like it. So in addition to the spice, you get that real nice creaminess. I love it. I think it lends itself really well to cocktails or neat. Yeah, great stuff. You know, done a lot of wonderful things with the rye whiskey. 
fast forward in time just a little bit, um, and you're going to 2013 when we released our 10-year-old bourbon. So as with whiskeys, the age statement on the bottle is the youngest uh, whiskey to use when you're mingling or blending this. So this is actually 10 to 15-year-old barrels that we put in this. Wow. So about twice as old as the orange label. And with that, you're going to get even more of those barrel characteristics. You're going to get more of those sweet caramel, vanilla. I get a ton of toffee in the middle of this, but it's going to be a thicker, longer mouthfeel yeah. and a longer finish. Um, this is really, really good stuff. You know, there's not a lot of age dated bourbons that are on the market that are readily available anymore. So to still be able to find this around, you know, I think it's kind of a diamond in the rough. I love this tenure. And for me, really this is. is neater on the rocks. Whenever I do whiskey festivals or host samplings, it's everyone's favorite. And I think you nailed it. It's because it's big and round. And then there's some nice mellow nuts. I get everything is like bullet bourbon, but roastier and toastier. I get brown sugar that's been brulee and pink peppercorns. It's really lovely. Uh, baked banana bread. I think you can't go wrong with it. It's a crowd pleaser. Neater on the rocks for me too. Yep. And it's the exact same mash bill as the orange label, right? So all we're dealing with is time here. This has just Absolutely. been sitting in that barrel here in Kentucky for about five or six extra years. And because of that, you get some amazing, amazing flavors out of it. So this 10 year is just amazing juice, twice as old, like we said about the orange label, but the same mash bill and really, really good stuff. You know, it's uh, like you said, you can find it. It's really available and it is delicious. So thank you so much, Lana, for coming by and chatting a little bit about the Bullet Frontier whiskey with me at the, at the bar here at uh, the BDC. So I'm glad to be here with you. It's great to be here, buddy. All right, so next up, we're gonna go to Chicago remote for Carly Gaskin. She's gonna do a little cocktail demo and tell us more about her cool bottled old fashioned. Oh, we're in for a treat. Carly's amazing, that's gonna be fun. I can't wait. Hello everyone, my name is Carly Gaskin. Today I'm gonna show you how to create a super delicious and sustainable old fashioned made with using leftover ingredients and of course the bullet bourbon. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to batch this cocktail. I love using this method because it allows us to avoid water waste and ice waste from uh, chilling and diluting. So instead of making one cocktail today, we're actually gonna be making four. And you can do this with almost any cocktail. Just take your single build and multiply it by however many cocktails you'd like to make. All right, so let's get started. So we're gonna take our leftover bullet bourbon bottle and we're gonna add in one cup or eight ounces of the bullet bourbon. And next we're gonna add in one ounce of a lemon oleosaccharum. So this type of syrup is made by peeling your citrus and letting it sit over some sugars for about 24 hours. This can be done with lemons, limes, grapefruits, oranges. I've done it with pineapple pulp, with strawberries, anything that's gonna have a little bit of oil or, or juice in it. Just let it sit over some sugars and the next day you'll have a super delicious syrup. Next, we're gonna add in six ounces of filtered water. And this is the part where we're avoiding the ice waste because we're already adding the water for diluting. And then we're going to keep it stored in our fridge so that it's nice and chilled for our guests. All right, and then we're going to add eight dashes of Angostura bitters. And here I'm using Angostura, but whatever oleo that you're making, feel free to throw in your own bitters that are going to pair perfectly with the bullet bourbon and that delicious leftover oleosaccharum that you've made. All right, so we're gonna pop this cap back on, give it a little shake, and there you go. Super easy, and we're gonna keep this stored in our refrigerator for up to 48, 72 hours, depending on what you're using. So once you take your pre-batched Old Fashioned out of the refrigerator, we're ready to serve. So all we're gonna do is add a couple pieces of ice, if you want, if you like your served up, that's okay too. And all we're going to do is pour this delicious pre batched Old Fashioned over some ice. And garnish with a dehydrated lemon wheel. 
And this is another way to avoid wasting that extra citrus that you might have, is to cut a couple cute little wheels out of it and dehydrate it. And there you have this really nice, really beautiful and delicious garnish. I was so proud to partner with Bullet Bourbon, the Cocktail Courier and American Forest Initiative this past spring. We worked together to create a low waste cocktail kit using some leftover pineapple pulps and some lemon stalks to create this beautiful and delicious citrus forward cocktail. Um, we actually broke some records and sold so many cocktail kits and we had a really fun time working together in the process. It's wonderful being able to inspire others to make sustainable choices and work with amazing folks such as you, Lana. All right, cheers, and back to you. Thanks, Carly. This looks great. I love a bottled old fashioned for a sustainable classic cocktail. This is awesome. That lemon oleo is a really great idea, and that pre dilution in the bottle, it's perfect. This is so easy, and you've got it so it's ready to go. Amazing. Cheers. Bullet has teamed up with American Forests, the oldest national nonprofit conservation organization in the USA, to plant one million trees over the next five years in the continued fight against climate change. This green initiative reaffirms our longstanding commitment to a more sustainable future by operating sustainably, responsibly, and preserving natural resources for future generations of the bartending and hospitality industry and all of its surrounding communities. American Forest has calculated a ton of environmental benefits to include things like carbon sequestration. 645,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide will be stored over the next 100 years. That's equal to removing the emissions from driving 140,000 cars over one year. Air purification. An average of 74,000 pounds of air pollutants will be removed from the air per year. For fine particulates like dust, this benefit is equal to removing a thousand cars from the road. An average of 75 million gallons of runoff water will be conserved per year. This is equal to the volume of water stored by 114 Olympic sized swimming pools. And lastly, the wildlife habitat. Roughly 2000 acres of critical forest across several states in the Eastern US will be restored. This partnership will reforest eastern forests dominated by white oaks for long-term health and resilience. White oaks are essential to the future of the whiskey industry. By law, bourbon must be aged in charred new oak containers. White oak contributes toasty, vanilla, caramel nutty notes to the liquid. As bourbon ages in the barrel, the wood contracts and expands seasonally, pulling the liquid in and out of the inner portion of the stave and drawing out wood sugars, and tannins that enhance the whiskey's flavor as it matures. Once a bullet barrel completes aging our bourbon, its life cycle continues with barrels being reused and refurbished to age other category spirits such as scotch, rum, and tequila. And we're super excited and really proud. Since last October, nearly 400,000 trees have already been planted. All right, now we're gonna take it back over to Adam to tell you a little bit about the modern technological and sustainable approach to making great whiskey we're doing at the Bullet Distilling Company in Shelbyville, Kentucky. Hey, welcome back. This is Adam Geisler again, outside of the Visitor Center at the Bullet Distilling Company here in Shelbyville, Kentucky. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the site we're filming on today. Um, we opened the distillery here in 2016. The Visitor Center opened in 2019. We are open for business. We're currently doing tours and would love to have you stop by anytime you're in Kentucky. We have multiple uh, tasting rooms where we do a uh, multi-sensory tasting. It's going to have different lights, different smells, obviously different amazing whiskeys we're going to run you through. Um, you know, this is the largest green build site that has happened for any distillery in the state of Kentucky in over the last 100 years. And one of the main things we love to do here is really highlight and focus on the sustainability efforts that we're doing to help out the environment. We're going to take you over to Lana again. She's going to have a couple more guests with her and they're going to take you through some of these amazing fun things we do here. So we're coming at you from the BDC tour bus. I've got some great friends with me today. Hey everybody, my name is Laura Cullen and I am the general manager of Brand Homes for North American Whiskey. Hey everyone, Laura. my name is Melissa Rift. I'm the single barrel ambassador for Bullet Distilling Company here at the distillery in Shelbyville. 
Hi, Melissa. Happy to have you here, Lana. Thanks for having Hi. me on the bus. Yeah. So, Lana, when you walked on the bus, you mentioned the um, graffiti on the ceiling, and uh, Laura actually has a really interesting tidbit about that. Oh, well, this was done by a really good friend of ours. Uh, we are the Frontier Whiskey here at Bullet, and one of our frontiersmen is a local artist called, uh, whose name is Braylon Stewart. He's very, very talented, mm -hmm. and he painted this whole bus for us and put into the murals that he made some of the pillars of our sustainability propositions here at Bullet Distilling. That's very cool. Yeah. I mean, in, in addition to looking amazing and being this cool visual stimulation, I didn't realize that it had some of the pillars. Can you point some out? Yeah, so go ahead, Melissa. I was going to say, we've got um, non-GMO, which is the first one that a lot of people see when they walk on here. You'll also see recycle, zero emissions, zero waste. So all of it kind of tying into the commitments that we've made at our new distillery here, being more modern and really having technology on our side, we've been able to really focus on uh, creating more sustainable practices and using yeah. our resources a lot more mindfully. Um, and one of the cool things about getting to see Braylon's work on the bus is it also ties in directly to the vehicle that we're riding on. So one of our big commitments is reducing emissions. And one of the ways we can do that from our tourism side is we use propane powered vehicles instead of gasoline. And that's gonna burn um, a lot less greenhouse gases and really yeah. dramatically reduce the, the effects of our carbon footprint. That's huge. Yeah, yeah, that's it's huge. pretty amazing. Um, and, it and this bus is driving back and forth, back and forth every it day, is. taking every visitors day. around the yeah, course. Yeah, so that could definitely have a big impact. So reducing that is going to be huge for, you know, the ultimate reducing of emissions. Another thing we think about is where we get a lot of our grains from, because those delivery trucks that are coming in, they can release a lot of emissions into the air as well. So something we do here, um, being in a very agricultural community here in Shelbyville, is we source 100% of our corn from the local community, um, only from farms within 30 miles of where we're sitting right now. That's incredible. So what that does is that eliminates and reduces a lot of the carbon footprint from transport. It does. In addition to supporting the local community. Absolutely. So that puts our dollars back into the Shelby County community. It's community focused agriculture. That is another part of our commitment to sustainability. Yeah. So I'm starting to see it really ties all in together. It does. Yeah. It's really kind of an ethos that we have here and it really permeates into everything we do in production. Um, another thing which we've got right behind us here, um, Laura was asking me earlier about where we get our water from. Yeah. Um, Laura, do you know what's so important about the water here in Kentucky? I mean, it's the number one pillar of making good bourbon. Absolutely. So that limestone Bingo. filtered water, you've got to have a good local source. Part of the reason we chose this facility or this site for our facility is because of the access to local water. And that's going to be Giss Creek, which is the local body of water that all of Shelby County uses. The retention pond is something that we implemented for our um, kind of mindfulness around water usage. We have something called a water stewardship program, which is about reducing our water usage as much as we can year to year. And the retention pond allows us to only capture as much as we need to function so that we're not creating a burden on the rest of the local community. Well, I think that's really important. That's another mindful moment. I heard that we pull very slowly as to not deplete mm -hmm. and we will never deplete this resource. Yeah, correct. So it's right really important community. that we not come in as a large facility and just suck out all the water from Gist Creek and not be mindful about it because it would really affect a lot of the farms and families that are around the area here. Absolutely. Yeah. And water is so important to, to farming, but also like we were saying, it's so important in bourbon production. For sure. You need this beautiful, clean, pristine water source with with uh, limestone and no iron. Yeah. Lack of certain minerals. Exactly. That's what, one of the things that makes Kentucky one of the best places for making bourbon in the country. Yeah. Now, another thing that we thought of kind of in the same vein of being friendly neighbors to the folks in the county is not just the water usage, but also energy usage in general. So using clean energy is really important, but also using it mindfully and making sure you're replenishing what you draw off is really important for a large facility like ours. So we have solar paneled all over the property. You'll see them when you come visit. We have the first industrial solar array in the county, and that allows us to route that clean energy back to the Shelby County power grid. And it kind of alleviates a lot of what we would otherwise be drawing off and could create an energy burden. That's an incredible yeah. accomplishment. I mean, thematically, what we're doing is trying to add to the local community, take only what we need and share everything that we produce. And that keeps that cycle of sustainability going. Absolutely. That's a that's a really good way of putting it, actually. It really um, is. And well, kind of the last thing that we've done to, to try and contribute to that kind of ethos um, is not only in how we produce our bourbon, but also how we replenish what we've used. And a big point with that is reforestation. Yeah. Um, so really making sure that we're replenishing 
you know, not only what it takes to make bourbon, but also what it takes uh, to age it in those oak barrels. For sure. Yeah. So that's kind of the final, final pillar of our commitment to sustainability. And really what we hope to do is continue building on these practices for years and years so that future generations of bourbon makers and bourbon consumers can feel good about the fact that we have a sustainable industry. Well, I mean, this is crucial. It's vital for the for the future of bourbon to thrive and the livelihood of all of those around us. We need to really be thinking about the steps we're doing and making these conscious decisions when you select your spirits and when you select anything. You want to make sure that you're, you're wasting as little as possible and that you're using only what you need. I think something that I've always really loved about Bullet is that we, we do tend to come in and when we do our big events and activations, we leave things better than we found it. So we always better Absolutely. the community. One of the other things that we like to focus on in terms of overall sustainability is Bullet, in fact, is a brand that was built by bartenders and the brand has always stayed true to that. The sustainability movement that's happening in the on-premise globally is an inspiration both to the brand and going back out forward, hopefully, to our bartender partners. It's yep. important to us. We know it's important to them. And really, as we've been talking about, it's really just important to the future in general. The way that the on-premise community is adapting and changing through all of the things that have been going on in the last year, which are too numerous to even talk about, is a big part of sustainability, not just in process, not just in materials, but also in just sustainability of the future of this entire industry. Yeah, absolutely. And I think kind of a, a last point to make about that is I know a lot of folks behind the bar um something i'm always inspired by is really reducing waste you know in the in the service industry and in the, the cocktail making sector um and kind of the last big thing that we've committed to here that we haven't covered yet is reducing waste and the cool thing about our distillery is it's actually zero waste to landfill as a production site which is a very unique thing and something something we've done a lot to implement practices that reduce reuse and recycle every bit of the process so that we don't have any waste going to landfill and it's something that you know it's really empowering to be at a distillery that's really paying attention to these things. Yeah. It's important and I think it is something to be really proud of. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us today, Lana. Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's amazing. Uh, what a lovely view as well, right? <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us for a quick look at BDC and our commitments to sustainability. And thanks Lana as always for coming to see us here. Thanks Melissa for hosting us. This was so informative and so much fun. It's so beautiful out here and you always have so much great insight to share. I appreciate it. And it's really fun. I mean, we've started the conversation about sustainable distilling here at Bullet Distilling Company. And I hear we're going to take it one step further with the new distillery in Lebanon, Kentucky. Absolutely. So we're going to go learn a little bit more about that inside. Have a good time. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs>
um, sustainably from a clean energy source, which is straight electricity. What is an electrode boiler? An electrode boiler is um, the source of the steam to get the entire distillery operation running. So instead of the old days of having fire um, and log burning uh, boilers yeah. to get the water hot, uh, when the water comes in, you would have to take the entire day to get water up to a certain temperature to begin distilling with it. Sure. This, you can have 170 degree water in seven seconds. So on these boiler plates. Right. So the electrode boilers are gonna eliminate fossil fuels and direct emissions from them. Correct. And then they also offer additional benefits like what? So in, in order to uh, meet the goals in 2030, you don't want to have any emissions at all. So there's zero fossil fuels going into these boilers. There's zero fossil fuels going into the facility. Yeah. Um, so it's literally zero waste. Um, so when you have clean energy, um, you have uh, a self-sustained power source, which is the elect electrode boilers. Sure. Um, you're going to find yourself in a very clean environment now, and not just the way the industry is, but it leads the industry in distilling sustainably. So another cool benefit of electrode boilers is they eliminate and lower noise pollution and air contaminants. They so, do. So they filter out all the dust particulates. Yep. So leading to cleaner air. So we were there last week and the facility is so clean on top of, um, you know, the boilers and so forth. It's a room that you would expect to be quite messy. If sure. it was a fossil fuel or carbon filled um, room, it would be very dusty and it would be you know real nasty it is it's like a brand new restaurant's kitchen it is so beautiful well spotless. traditionally that's a super filthy area right oh my gosh that's that's incredible yep. and that's a super massive space it is so we're already doing our part right there and you can tell how clean everything is and that renewable electricity is really kicking in and mm -hmm. doing its part yep amazing so what's amazing about this place is it also has a what's called a yard dog. It's a self-sustainably 100% electric truck. It's like a semi-truck. And every time the barrels are filled from the barrel house, they get put onto this truck. This electric truck will take it over to the warehouses to unload. And the forklifts that unload that truck, also electric. That's amazing. Yep. Here at BDC, we're, we're using the solar-powered right. equipment. That's, that's really cool, the way that we are able to do that. Um, there's so many little touch points at the there distilleries are. that you don't think of every day That's right. and that it seems like we've been able to kind of anticipate yeah. like things like, I mean, even steam, right? Yeah. There's a the, lot of steam used in whiskey production. Yeah. The steam is all coming from renewable energy. I mean, the steam is ready. It doesn't have to take all day to get hot. You yeah. can make and cook and distill on the fly. So we've learned about the water here in Shelbyville from Gist Creek and all the conservation methods that we're using here. What are we doing at the Lebanon Distillery that's different? We are also leading the industry in the minimalization of water usage. Yes. So truly, just like Shelbyville, Lebanon will also be zero waste to landfill. Sourcing renewable electricity from local utilities allows for purchase of zero greenhouse gas emission electricity supplied by certified renewable sources. That's right. That's so cool. So we're really just making the difference every step we take. And it really plays into us blazing a path and pioneering this path on the new frontier of whiskey production at Bullet. It really does. I can't wait to visit Lebanon soon with you. Well, I can't either, but I have a surprise to tell you. What? We just started laying down our first barrels of whiskey last week. <gasps> no way. Yep. There's juice in them barrels? There's juice in them barrels. I love it. Something great to look forward to. So clearly, renewable energy will really help us make a difference for a better tomorrow. That's the frontier of the liquid in the glass. Now let's go back to Carly Gaskin for some practical tips behind the bar and getting liquid to lips. Creating sustainable cocktails and making sustainable choices can be super easy. So here's a couple of easy tips to help you create a more sustainable cocktail. A great cocktail starts with a great spirit, and the same can be said for making sustainable choices. So choose a brand that takes a mindful approach to distilling and producing and bottling. Try reusing before you throw things away. Like with the sustainable old fashioned, we're reusing the citrus peels before juicing. So we're getting a nice, delicious citrus forward syrup in the process. 
Try avoid using plastic straws. I feel like at this time, it's 2021. We know this and there are so many amazing options out there. We have hay straws such as these. We have glass straws, metal straws, corn, agave. They make straws out of pretty much anything these days and the turtles will thank you. Try using ingredients that are available year round or are in season and thankfully bourbon is available all year round. Ugly produce might not look great on a plate, but it tastes delicious in a cocktail. So we can use, we can reuse those ugly produces for syrups, for infusions. We can puree them and freeze them into ice cubes. That'll look really cute in your glassware. Try bashing and bottling your favorite drinks, like with the sustainable old fashioned. We save water waste from chilling and diluting and are instead batching and pre-diluting our cocktails. So we simply pour them over some ice or serve them up give them to our guests, and it'll save you a lot of time on those super busy Friday nights. And shop local if you can. Fortunately, I live in Chicago, so we're surrounded by so many amazing farms all year round. I love going to the farmer's market in the spring and the summer. I find a lot of inspiration for the kitchen and for behind the bar from some locally sourced and organic ingredients that you wouldn't necessarily get that kind of produce at the grocery store. And avoid over prepping if you can. You can juice your citrus as you need it, or you could juice just for the night. Uh, typically about a, a lemon and lime will, will yield about an ounce and a half to two ounces of juice per piece. And if you have fruit that's about to turn, puree and freeze it into cubes or freeze those extra edible flowers and garnishes from your leftover events or from service. It'll look really nice in your glass and guests will love that extra pop of color. And then when using citrus peels to garnish your drink, let's try cutting discs instead of peels. So we just take our knife and run it down here and we have a super cute citrus coin or disc, whatever you wanna call it. Um, this yields us about twice as many discs as we would peels. So generally we're gonna get about five or six peels from a, a lemon. And when we're cutting discs, we're gonna get about eight to 10. So this is gonna give us the same amount of oils that we would from a full peel and we're using a lot less fruit in the process. And try using mindful garnishes. I love using dehydrated citrus. It's a way for me to reuse those extra lemons and limes, grapefruits, oranges that would often be thrown away. Just pop them in your oven with it left open on low heat for a long time, or you can get a dehydrator super cheap on Amazon or anywhere else you wanna buy one. And you have these really nice garnishes that'll last for a pretty long time. Thank you to Lana and the Bullet team. Thank you Tales of the Cocktail for putting this on and for hosting me. I've had an amazing time and I hope I've inspired you all to make some sustainable choices. Cheers. So as you can see, Diageo is really doing its part to reduce its impact globally on the environment. And Bullet is doing its part to really reinvent category standards and what responsible whiskey production means. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks to Tales. Thanks to the Bullet Distilling Company team. Thanks to the brand ambassadors and thanks to you.